we're continuing with limits of a function of x and y, two variables. And as a reminder, um, the concept of limit is quite a bit more complicated by just adding even one more variable to the mix than a single variable limit was from the first year of calculus. And we're going to be studying um, two types of problems. So the first type of problem that we've already looked at is a particular limit where I'm going to tell you in advance that it doesn't exist and we're going to do a verification. We're going to demonstrate that it does not exist. D and E does not exist. And there were two ways of doing that. Your options were could you find two paths to the limit value with different different uh, solutions. So you know limit as the x and y coordinates approach some point of a function if you approach this point from two different directions can you show that there are two different values or if you're lucky could you find one path where that same limit is undefined so we've done that already um, and the method of attacking that was laid out fairly clearly but uh, it does warrant you practicing on additional problems. Now for this segment I want to show you the other type of limit that I want to really emphasize for this course and that type of limit is the following. Could we convert to some other type of coordinate system to make this simpler? I'm not suggesting that was an idea that would have popped into your head naturally, but maybe after I show you how this works, it will not seem overly strange. So I, I am going to demonstrate this with a problem, um, but as a reminder, with polar coordinates, anything with x and y gets converted to r values and theta values and the primary conversion formulas that we would use um, or that we could use um, x is equal to r multiplied by the cosine of the angle theta y is r times sine of theta and x squared plus y squared is r squared based on a graph that might look something like this. So this has x and y coordinates. You know, so this would be y and this would be x and this here would be r and then there would be your angle theta from the positive x-axis. We have recently done a little review with uh, polar coordinates to help with cylindrical coordinates in the course. So this video is not to retrain you on polar coordinates, um, but it turns out you don't need much more than this and one clever little trick to progress. So let me take you to an example of a limit of a function with two variables where polar could be used. Here we go. All right. So this algebra is not randomly generated, I'll tell you that right now, um, but it will fit our needs um, in two ways. First thing, if you were to do a direct substitution of x and y both becoming zero, you would find that this fraction will be zero over zero, which in calculus terms we would call indeterminate which means we don't know. It's unknown. That's not the same as undefined. This is the we don't know if there's an answer yet to the limit. We know we cannot directly plug in 0 and 0 but we don't know if what happens if we get close to this point if something could be done. Now there's a key condition 
that we have to meet in order to use polar coordinates. And this is, eh, it looks like it could be sort of random and, and it may not happen regularly, but you could redirect every graph to probably take this into consideration if, if necessary by doing some shifts. So here's the thought. We are approaching the origin, zero, zero. Okay, so X and Y are approaching zero, zero from all directions. Okay, well, we're going to replace this thought here from all directions as theta. Theta would be our direction. Theta could be zero, theta could be pi over six, theta could be pi over two, theta could be five pi over four, theta could be any value we want. 17.29 degrees if you want. But here is the kicker. If you're approaching the origin, this means that R is approaching zero. It doesn't matter what the direction is. It doesn't matter what the direction is if R is approaching zero. And my students and my visitors, please note this is two variables both approaching zero. This is one variable approaching zero. We're going to turn this limit into a single variable limit with another symbol floating along, but the limit will be involving R and R only. So if we take this problem here and convert it to this new concept, the limit R approaches zero, the denominator x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. There is a similar set of terms we could simplify in the numerator, but I'm going to hold off uh, briefly on that. And I'm going to do a direct substitution. 3x squared would be 3 r squared cosine squared of theta. 2xy squared is 2 r cosine of theta, r squared sine squared of theta, and then 3y squared is 3 r squared sine squared of theta. Now you may have noticed that uh, my demeanor uh, changed uh, rather suddenly, but maybe it was subtle. Uh, I went into algebra mode, plug in values, compute quickly, my apologies for my poor sense of humor there. But I want you to see that there are some, uh, well, let's, let's see what we can do. My limit as r approaches zero, I'm gonna move that off the screen now. I'm gonna combine r squared, um, three r squared, which is part of two terms here, and factor that will be cosine squared plus sine squared. That should look familiar. Plus two r to the third power cosine of theta sine squared of theta. And this is equal to one, cosine squared plus sine squared, that is. So if that's equal to 1, then look what I have here. I have r squared. I have I could factor r squared out of everything that's remaining. Limit r approaches 0. r squared factors in the numerator 3 plus 2r cosine theta sine squared theta divided by r squared and my mentor would have said chum chum right here. Um, we reduce. It looks like something that might have been nicknamed canceled 
but r squared divided by r squared is equal to 1, and when you multiply by 1, nothing happens. Now look what's left. Remember, r approaches 0. If this r approaches 0, then this whole ugly little term is approaching 0. And that means I have 3 plus 0, or 3, as a result. That would be the limit of that original problem by converting to polar. Now the key condition was we had to um, use polar coordinates where we were approaching the origin, but you can relocate every xy graph to the, if you have the point 2 comma 1 with clever little shifts you can make the graph so it approaches the origin and evaluating a limit with one variable will always be simpler than evaluating evaluating with more than one variable. Now come back for the next segment and I'll show you a case where polar can be used to verify that a limit doesn't exist. Stay tuned.